Good morning, congregation. Thanks again for the opportunity. And the good thing is that anyway, we are prepared to continue worshiping the Lord. Sometimes the technology fails, but our, our spirit and our desire is ready to worship the Lord. That's the most important thing. I don't know if it's gonna, gonna be continue working. This is working. Okay, <clears throat> the title of my message for this morning is The Lion, the Lamp, and the Scroll. That's the title of my message for this morning. Revelation chapter 5, verse 1 through verse 7. The focus of Revelation chapter 4 was the throne. Uh, here John begins with reference to the throne in the chapter uh, 5 and the chapter 4, but now shifted his focus to the scroll held by the enthroned Lord. And we know that the enthroned Lord is God the Father. God the Father is in the throne. In the chapter 4 and also chapter 5 is going to mention this, that God the Father is reigning in the throne. The Bible mentioned right here in chapter 5 of Revelation, a scroll reading inside and on the back. And common practice to write it down in both sides of the scroll. The common practice was just to write in one side. And in you, you saw at the beginning of the, of the presentation, the book or the scroll was different at the book that we have now. It was to totally different. So the scroll, we see that the scroll, the scroll is written inside and on the back. And we said that this is uncommon practice to write it down. The common practice was to write it down only in one side. And probably this means that there was a lot of information in the scroll. Uh, probably or almost more information than the scroll can contain. And other point that we need to consider is the scroll is the scroll of God. The scroll belongs to the Lord. And he decides how to write it down. He didn't follow the orders or the rules or the human way to write it down. The nature, even the nature, sometimes we see that the Lord break the nature. He's not following the nature. The nature is following the Lord God. Jesus walking over uh, the water. If we, uh, uh, in human terms, we think that's impossible. But he was walking over the water. So that's the way that the Lord decided to write it down in the scroll. And this is the scroll of God. So what, time, what type of book is this? It's content. What, what was written upon it? This is uh, two questions that we are going to be considering. I'm not saying that probably I'm going to be right in my points because it's almost impossible to know what the book or this or the uh, a scroll contains. But some think that this book or this scroll was the Old and New Testament together. Probably. We don't know. But if we say that this was the Old Testament and New Testament together, so we are going to do 
the following question. If the scroll was the New Testament and Old Testament together, the question is, who is unworthy to open the scroll? Because we have now right here the Old Testament and New Testament together. So I don't think, honestly, I don't think that was the New Testament and Old Testament together. But remember, let's remember one thing. Whatever was on this scroll, no one except Jesus was worthy to open it. That's the, the point that we need to be considering this morning. Only Jesus was able to break the seals of this book. Only Jesus. So we say, no, probably it's not the New Testament and Old Testament together. What about the a sentence? Some things that was a sentence against the enemies of the church. That's what another believer thinks is a sentence against the enemies of the church. And this is probably right. The enemies of the church in the time of the Apostle John was, of course, Satan, number one, and also the Roman Empire. Satan was using the Roman Empire to follow and to attack and destroy the church of Jesus Christ. Persecution. The Roman or Satan used the persecution, execution, executing everyone that confessed the name of Jesus Christ. Deny and you believe. Confess and you shall die. The believer had to take a decision. And many continue confessing the Lord of Jesus Christ. And many continue dying for God's sake. For the faith in Jesus Christ. So probably it was that. A sentence against the enemies of the church. But we come back at the same question again. But this is... Uh, uh, talking about a sentence against the enemies of the shores who is unworthy to open the scroll. Maybe no one, maybe only Jesus, probably only Jesus, and this God sent, this second point, God sends because in the following chapter, in the chapter 6, we see that Jesus starts to open the book and start reading the judgments against the enemies of the church or enemies of the Christian. Uh, some think that this are judgment against the whole of future, uh, future uh, situations in the world. And probably they are right, but not too much sense because the, at that time, in the first century, when John wrote this book, the Roman Empire was persecuting the church and the church was suffering. Suffering a lot. So probably that's what the book contains and means. But my easy conclusion is that symbols mean God's will. God's will. And no one is worthy to lose or to open God's wills except the Son of God. When I'm talking about God's will, I'm not talking about, we, we call God's will the Bible. Old Testament and New Testament. And of course, that's the God's will. But when I'm saying God's will right here in this point, I'm talking about things that only God knows and God having or hasn't revealed yet. God's will. 
by Jesus, he knew or he knows God's will, the will of the Father. Or simple means, or contains this book, God's judgment. Like I said before, chapter 6 of Revelation is talking about judgment. Chapter 7, the same thing. And if you continue reading uh, the book of Revelation, you're going to see judgment and judgment and judgment. But only Jesus was worthy to lose the seals of this book. Only Jesus. Let's keep in mind that. Or we can say that the book contains God's final settlement of the affairs of the universe. That's what we can say about the book. And John, John said that he saw that the book was sealed with seven seals. There were seven strings. Each string sealed with wax. That was the custom at that time. Seven. The number seven, according to the Bible, means perfection. Means complete. And we see it in all Old Testament. In New Testament, this number in many times. How many ways do we have to forgive our brother? Peter said seven times. The Lord said, Jesus said, no. Seventy times seven. We see the number seven over there. The Lord, Jehovah, called to Joshua to march. He said, go and march around the city of Jericho. How many times? Seven times. Times. Six times you are going to bring the army of Israel and you're going to be marching around the city. One time in every day during six days. But at the seventh day, bring again the army, but also bring the elders, bring the priests, bring the Ark of the Covenant and march <clears throat> again around the city. In the day, number seven, seven times. Again, we see the number seven over there. Right here, in this same chapter, we see that the Lamb has seven eyes and seven horns. So this number means perfection. This is a number that belongs only to God. God is perfect. Always is perfect. He's perfect forever. Not sometimes. Always. So that's what the number seven means. So the, the scroll of God is sealed to seven seals. It's a perfect book. It's a perfect judgment. And we also, the Roman law, at that time, the Roman law required a will to be sealed seven times. When the New Testament was revealed and was written down, God used, he was the, the writer or the author of the book that was the Apostle John, he used the way to write it down at that time. For that reason, sometimes for us, it's kind of hard to understand some books of the Bibles because we didn't live at, in that time. And we had to study more, investigate more. But it was also a law in the Roman Empire. A will to be accepted, it has to be sealed seven times for the Roman Empire. This book is sealed seven times for God the Father. So this law in this book is going to be accepted because God the Father sealed it seven times. Uh, 
And we see right here a question. Who is worthy to open this scroll? Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. Who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. Revelation chapter 5, verse 2 and 3. We see right here a strong angel. We don't know the name of this angel. Some thing that was Gabriel. We don't know. The Bible only said that was a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose its seal. This is a challenge. The angel is challenging. It's challenging every creature. The angel is challenging the entire universe. Who is worthy? More than a question is a challenge. Who is able? Who, who is worthy? And of course, no creation was worthy to respond to the angel. No creature worthy in the en entire universe. No one. And we see right here that when John see that no one respond to the angels, including John, John said, and no one in heaven, multitude of angels around the throne singing and worshiping the Lord the Father, Lord, every second of every moment. But John, don't see no one, that no one is able or worthy to break the seals of the book. And John said, no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it, even no one able to include to even to look look it. So John said, "I wept much." John was crying, weeping because no one was found to be able to open or to break the seals of the book. And in the chapter 4, the, another angel said to, to John, Come and look, the things are going to take place after this. But now in the chapter 5, we see that no one is able or worthy to open uh, the book. And so maybe John thought, the future, God is holding now the future. He's is postponing or postponing the, the future and no one is going to be able to, to see the future except only God that knows the future. So what's the reason that John was uh, uh, crying and saying, no hope, there is now no hope. And John concludes, because no one was found worthy to open and to read the scroll and to look at it. But we see now that the lion is worthy. The lion is worthy. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Because the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. And I look and behold in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes. One of the elders, 
one John was crying, and one of the elders, no one angel, but one of the elders rescued John of his suffering. He was crying and suffering. And one of the elders rescued him. Calm down. Relax. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus is called the lion of the tribe of Judah because he's a descendant of the tribe of Judah. In the Old Testament, we read about that. And also, the one of the elders said, the root of David, he's a descendant of David. Jesus was called son of David, have mercy on me, when he was on the earth. Have mercy on me. But before David was Jesus, Let's read how, how we say right here. The root of David, not the branches, not the branches of David, the root. Root descend from Jesus. Jesus is before David. The root of David has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose his seven seals that's a great new because he was suffering but the elder rescued a young from his grief Calm down the lion is worthy the lion who prevailed the lion who prevailed the lion the messiah the messiah of israel the lion who is the Messiah of Israel and the hawk of the Gentiles. He is worthy. Which are seven the spirit of God sent out into all the air. And then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. The lion came and took the scroll of the right hand of God the Father. The surprise for John is the following. The one of the elders announced the lion is worthy. But later, John saw a lamb instead. The lion is worthy. But song, but John saw a lamb instead. And Jesus is, we say that Jesus is the lion, or is called the lion of the tribe of Judah, because he's a descendant of Judah. Jesus is called a lion for the excellency of his strength. Jesus is a strong, a strong like a lion. That's the reason that the Bible called Jesus the lion of the tribe of Judah. And also Jesus is called a lion for his heroical spirit. Jesus is a real hero. And Jesus is called a lion for his principality. The lion is king of beasts. That's the reason that Jesus is called a lion, or that's the reason that the angel is calling Jesus the lion, or the tribe of Judah is worthy. And also Jesus is called a lion for his vigilancy. He's, he's watching oh the lion the lion is one of the animals that sleepeth with open eyes that's the another reason that Jesus is called 
the lion or the tri or Judah or called lion because he is all the time watching. The lion, even when he is sleeping, he got his eyes or the eyes open. He's watching all the time. The lamb is also called, the, the elder said, called, or told, announced to John, a lion, but present to John, a lamb. Why a lamb? For his humility. Jesus is called the Lamb of God for his humility or is remembering to the church or to the use the sacrifice in the Old Testament. A lamb was sacrificed every year or once in a year for the sins of the people of Israel. Now, the angel is saying, this is the, this is the Lamb of God. He's humble. He's called the Lamb of God for his gentleness. He's gentle. And the angel is calling Jesus the Lamb of God for his sacrificial love. He sacrificed his life dying on the cross. That's the reason that the angel is introducing or one of the elders is introducing to John, to Jesus, as a lion and as a lamb. And John saw a lamb full of knowledge and power. John saw a lamb as a slain. This means that already happened about Almost 60 years, the book of Revelation was uh, uh, written probably in the year, between the year 90 and 96. Jesus uh, died in the year 43, almost 60 years later, John saw Jesus that, that his sacrifice is fresh. A lamb that was slain. Because the sacrifice of Jesus Christ before God's eyes is fresh. Every moment is fresh. It's still fresh. Jesus is redeeming, is rescuing, is forgiving, is bringing people to God the Father through his sacrifice. And the Father saw a sect those people or these people because God the Father see the sacrifice of Jesus fresh. They already passed 60 years and his sacrifice is fresh. Already passed now 2,000 years and his sacrifice is still fresh before God the Father. And also, uh, John saw that the Lamb was full of knowledge and power. And we see the, the, the main one symbols, main one symbols of power, and they, they conjure up, uh, they conjure up bees and, and birds pray, uh, and, 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 and those symbols are the symbols that prefer the nations. Symbols, uh, uh, ferocious symbols of power. We see in the flowers, in the flags, uh, or nation, uh, lions, tigers, eagles. And what about the uh, sports team? It's the same thing. They are no one to use a lamp. Why a lamp? So weak. But the representative of the kingdom of heaven is a lamp. Is a lamb, no a ferocious beast like people lies. We see in the flag of uh, uh, England, for example, or, or, or other countries. Eagles, lions, 
because they want to show to the rest of the world that they are the most powerful nation on the world. Symbols of power. But the representative of the church is simple, a lamb. A lamb slain. The sacrificial uh, lamb, the lamb that died on a cross. That's a, a the great difference between the war and the kingdom of the Lord. So the Bible says that John saw a lamb full of knowledge and power, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Seven horns. The word horns means power. In this case, in this particular case, talking about Jesus, that the land had seven horns mean omnipotence, almighty. It's a lamb that is almighty. Jesus is almighty. Seven eyes. Only science, knowledge, wisdom. Jesus see everything. Jesus know everything. Who is able to advise Jesus? No one. Peter tried to advise him. Lord, stop. Don't go to Jerusalem. Stop. Don't say that. You are saying that you are going over there and you are going to suffer and you are going to die. No, don't think that. Don't go. Stop. Jesus rebuked Peter. Who is able to advise God? Nobody is able to advise God. He knows everything. Before people start talking, Jesus, he knew what people was thinking about. He knew that. He got all knowledge. He's, Peter said to him, later on, he said to him, you know everything. You will be asking me if I love you, if I love you, if I love you. Lord, you know everything. It's a lamb that is full of knowledge and power. That means seven eyes. And again, we are mentioned the number seven because we said that means perfection. God is perfect. Jesus is perfect. The Lamb is perfect. He knows everything. And the Lamb holds the future. Then he came and took the scroll. He took the scroll of the right hand of the one that was sat on the throne. The one that was sat on the throne is God the Father. People say Jesus is like an angel. Not true. No angel worthy to open the book. There were millions of angels around. Around. Jesus is in the midst. And no one was able or worthy to look or even to take the scroll of the right hand of God the Father. Only Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, this morning, we are believing that Jesus is worthy. Is the one. Let's come to him. Let's, if, you, if, you, if we are in problems, if, if we are uh, going away from the presence of God, this morning we invite you again to repent of all sins, Confessing our sin and coming to the one that he is worthy. He is the one. He is worthy to forgive to every human being. Everyone. If we, if we are not Christian yet, he is worthy. He is able to save to everybody. He is the one. There is no another name but Jesus' name. Thank you so much. And this is the lesson for this morning. God bless you.